Hello and welcome. Today we're going to be talking about VIT. What is VIT? VIT is the French word for fast. VIT is a JavaScript development server and bundler that delivers source files over ESM or ES6 modules, making it blazing fast in things like start, reload, and it also supports hot module reloading or HMR. VIT is the brainchild of even you, the creator of the Vue.js framework, but supports out of the gate building applications with React, Svelte, Preact, Vanilla.js, and of course Vue. TypeScript is also available for any of the mentioned libs. So let's learn by doing. Let's build and deploy a Vanilla.js VIT app and talk about some of the features of this awesome next generation front end tooling. Let's get to it. So let's create a new VIT app. If you already have NPM or Yarn installed in your system, you can just run NPM in it. And here you will do vit at latest. Okay. And then it will ask you for um, the vit project. If you don't have it already installed, it will ask you if you can install uh, the vit uh, project. But I already have it in my system and I'm going to give it a name. Let's just call it my vit project. If I can type my vid project. Okay. And like I was saying earlier, you can select any of this uh, framework or lib libraries uh, to get started. I'm just going to go with vanilla JS and I can choose between vanilla with TypeScript or just vanilla. Let's just go plain vanilla. And you see it has scaffolded my project. I can now follow the instruction that I see. We're going to CD into my vid project. Okay. And I'm going to run NPM install. All right. Pretty quick. And before running NPM run dev, I'm just going to open it into VS code. So let's do code that. Okay. So, I wanted to look at the structure first before going into running the project. So you have a typical uh, front end structure with a node modules for all your dependencies. You have a default index HTML file. And what is interesting, it's not um, isolated into like a public folder or something. It's directly right here within the structure of your project. And if we open this index HTML, we see that it has a main div app with ID app. It just targets uh, this source main JS file, but we don't see any CSS being um, loaded here from the get go. Opening the main JS file, we see that the CSS is imported here directly. So we can see that uh, C, uh, ES6 style imports are supported right out of the box. Okay. And we will test that when we're going to make a few changes here. But the very first thing, now that we have um, an idea of the structure, which is pretty simple, let's look at the package JSON and the scripts that we have. So we have these three scripts essentially that we're going to be using the dev script to start our local folder, the build script, which will like bundle our project for production and the serve one that is going to allow us to look at like uh, our production build, but in our local environment. So uh, since we have already um, installed the project, the dependencies, let's open up the terminal here. And let's run npm run dev. There you go. That was pretty fast. And then we can open the project at localhost 3000. And we have the default like uh, vit uh, install. So let's go back to the CSS here. And I'm just going to do a background color. Let's have a dark background color. And for the font, let's have a color 
of white, okay? So the HMR update is running and it has updated the style CSS. And if we open our project, we see that the styles have been applied. Perfect. Now let's, um, let's try to build the project. So let me, and by the way, if you're going to use serve, um, it is assuming that you already have built the project. So, uh, the build, the serve is going to be looking for your dist folder in order to serve you that application locally. So, um, if you really want to be able to use a uh, serve, I will maybe add, uh, the NPM run build and vid preview so that it allows you that anytime you run serve, you already have like the build that is done first. If you miss that step, it will not be able to target like the this folder is looking for. So, but let's assume that we just want to uh, build first. Let's go back to the terminal and just go npm run build. Okay. There you go. Now you have the this folder that has been created. Everything that you need as dependencies are going to be in assets. And you see that in assets, your um, index, um, your index CSS and your index JS file are going to have some hashes in there. I think the hashes are there for caching and for fast reloading. So correct me if I'm wrong, anybody who knows more about it. And then in the index HTML file in the this folder, one interesting element here, there are many interesting elements, but one that caught my eye is this cross origin attribute. So this cross origin attribute, uh, since you're going to be, uh, going into the local file system, I think it is here in order for you to be able to get, um, that without having a course issue. Okay. So, but view, um, not view, vit is very well documented. You can double check on that, uh, um, and that assessment. So now if I want to serve this locally, uh, if I don't use serve, I could just like this into my, uh, CD into the disk folder. And I have the live server, uh, extension, um, um, installed here, and I'm just going to live server into it. And you see now we are at um, 8080, which is the default port for like the production view. And we have our same vid app that is working in here. So now we could do that in one step. Since we have, and you see a live server is ready for changes, but we don't want to be touching here. This is our production app. So let's just uh, exit out of it. And let's just go back one folder up. Okay. And we are in the right spot here. Command K. Yeah. So now we could do that in one shot. I'm going to get rid of the disk folder. Okay. Let's move it. We don't have it anymore. And now I want to run this serve command that will not only build, but then serve at the same time. So let's just go NPM run serve. There you go. You see now it has created our disk folder, like I was telling you earlier, and now it's exposing the app at local host 5,000. So, and there you go. We still have like the same app. So these are like uh, some of the things that you could do just to make sure that you have your development and your production um, um, uh, application streamlined this way. So now let's try to build um, something with what we have here. We're going to build uh, I would say, I, I don't want to say useless, but like a good example of uh, a vanilla JS app. But the one thing that made me so excited about uh, this, uh, this tooling is like the native ES, um, ES imports. So let me 
go ahead here and I'm going to create, um, I'm going to create, uh, uh, let's get rid of the, this folder. I probably could add it to my script. Uh, but uh, let me just get rid of the, this folder. And um, at the root, I'm going to create an utils folder. And in the utils folder, I'm going to create a test that module that GS file. Okay. So for the test, I'm going to, let's see, we're going to have a, um, what can we do in here? Let's do something as simple as uh, we're going to export a test module. We're going to export a test module and the completion is done by tab nine. I'm going to do a whole uh, tutorial on tab nine for code completion and uh, UI support. So here, I uh, just want it to be a function that is going to take a message. And uh, that message, basically, we're just going to alert it. Okay. We're just going to alert back that message. Okay. All right. Inside the utils folder, let's create an index.js file. index.js file and we're going to export all from and you see how tab 9 is completing uh, is helping me here look a little smarter so export all from and uh, we have test module okay test that module and that's it nice all right now let's go back to our main GS file and in here I'm going to import um, test okay I can even do import from utils yep I can import from utils and here I can import test module. <clears throat> I really like uh, using it this way. I don't have to start like a node server somewhere or, you know, this is just, to me, this is just like awesome already because I'm going to be doing with dealing with the browser. I don't have to take browserify and everything else. I just like a code the way that I do when I, when I'm doing rapidly um, prototyping like a vanilla JS application. Okay, so we have that and um, here I'm just going to add a set timeout. Okay, and let's give it a second. So 1000. Okay, and let's just call test module vit is blazing fast. Okay, <laughs> tab nine is messing with me right now. So let's just uh, keep it at that. Okay, command S. Let's, um, let's make sure now we run npm run dev. All right, and let's go back to our local host one second. And then we have vit is blazing fast. This is awesome. So we pretty much have a module here or like, um, you know, how we would uh, start defining a JavaScript module. We are able to import it into our main JS file and Vit just like does its magic in the back and does something very cool for us. Okay, let's add, let's add something to our test module here. And um, gonna be fetching um, some post uh, types from like the JSON server, type code JSON server. So let's do export constant 
and it's going to be called i'm going to call it ify post you know it's going to be something that is going to execute right away well you tell me why don't why do you even need to put it in a in a module or whatever but that's just for the example for the sake of example so here i'm going to put an ify okay and um let's make it an async function here and inside since i'm going to be using the the fetch api i'm going to do let query which is going to be equal to fetch okay and i don't think type code has https and that's going to be json placeholder type code dot com and i want to get all the post elements post plural so that's going to be my query but i'm going to await for it okay next step here and uh, we can give ourselves some space we don't need uh, this side so let's just do command b here and let's go to the next one and this time we're gonna do let post yep oh i love that tab 9 already is giving me that the await query <laughs> this is cool man so query json all right and i'm just gonna log or console that log post so since this is an iffy basically we're gonna be able to see it uh uh, uh, execute right away uh, do we need to import it into our main no I think since we have it all exported it's just gonna execute let me see if that's true so it says okay and okay so let's inspect here and let's go into our console and you see that our 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 ify uh, immediately invoked function like uh, expression i think that's what it stands for it has like executed and if we look at the network tab let's just refresh right here vit is blazing fast and if we look at the network tab we see that we have executed this post that went to type code um, post so that's pretty cool and you see that i'm already even though <laughs> i don't know if this is this can be called like a, a, a valid JS application but you see the building blocks and what i really like about it i'm starting not to even worry about the tooling part i'm starting to focus on my functionality and what my app should look like and to, to me, that is like priceless. You know, I really don't have to worry about that thing. Uh, Vit is taking care of it. And that is just plain awesome. So now the last step, uh, we're going to get this ready for deploying it uh, so we can share it with like, you know, um, um, I don't know, co-workers. We can share it with like uh, the client. So let's do it. And we're going to be using there's a lot of uh, options nowadays, but I'm becoming a very big fan of Surge, Surge SH. So, so go to Surge and then get like um, um, an account in there. And I'm going to show you how fast you can deploy after you get an account. The account is free. And of course, you can do more if you go with the with the paid version. But out of the box, what you get out of it is just it's just like super awesome. So let's go back to our project here. And first thing first, I want to make sure that my production build is all right. So I'm just going to do npm run serve, which creates like this folder. So this is ready for production. But at the same time, I can look at it here locally okay vid is blazing fast okay and uh, let me inspect and i see that the call has been made i have my hundred uh posts that are coming back from my api call 
perfect. So let's say I have checked it and then everything works for my end-to-end -end testing or whatever you want to put in there before you push it to a production server. Now I'm going to use Surge that I already have installed. So if you don't have a Surge install, you would just use this npm install global Surge. I already have it. I'm not going to run it again. So let's do command K here and I'm just going to do Surge. So when I do Surge, I'm going to target here the this folder and say this, this is what I want you to push up. Okay. So let's do that. It's asking me <laughs> if I'm okay with this domain. I'm okay. APD plastic search. Why not? And it's uploading it. And then boom. I have it now um, available at this URL that I can copy. Come here. Come and V. Vit is blazing fast. Let's look at the console again. Okay, so it's saying that it was loaded over HTTPS but requested an insecure resource. Content must be served over HTTPS. Okay, let's see if we can do something about this. Um, let me see if I just prefix it with HTTP instead. And that's just because we are requesting, um, there you go. Now we don't have a problem. Okay. So just to be a little careful about that, of course you can go into the config and then make sure, um, you, you take care of, um, the, um, the HTTPS issue, but this is just for a demo to show you real quick how to start with the vid project not have really to worry about like the bundling side of it, not have to worry about, you know, the tooling side of it. Uh, Vit has like a very extensive like documentation. So if you go to the get started, you see all of these things that are there building for production, deploying a static site. So I highly recommend that you spend some time in there. They have done a great job at documenting some of these steps, but I hope this gives you a glimpse at like what is possible with this very cool next generation front end tooling. That's all I had for you today. And please do not forget to subscribe and turn on your notification. There is way more that we have for you in store. I see you next time. Take care.